Welcome to the How to Use Wikitree video series hosted by Wikitree's U.S. Black Heritage Project. Video number three, how to edit profiles. In this video, you will learn how to edit a Wikitree profile. In the previous video, I created the profile for Julia Ann Carter. Now I am going to go to her new profile to make some edits and make improvements to her profile. To make changes to any profile, first click on the Edit tab. As soon as you've created a brand new profile, you will want to work your way from top to bottom in Edit mode, checking each field for accuracy as you go and clicking the radio buttons for certain and uncertain. Since I don't have any parents attached, I can't mark those as certain or uncertain yet, so I'll begin with her name fields. Julia and Anne. Are certain based on the documents I have. Alan as her last name is also certain this, since this is the last name on her headstone. Horsley is uncertain. I'm not sure where this last name comes from so I'm going to mark it uncertain for now. Before we move on notice these small black question marks next to each field. When you click on each one it will take you a help page that explains that field in further detail. So this one shows proper first name, what that field means, and what uh, additional information you might need to know about using that field. Scrolling down, the birth date is already marked about or uncertain since it's only an approximate birth date. I can mark both her birth location and death locations as certain. Let's scroll down to the biography section. Right above it here, you will find the toolbar. All of these buttons um, will be very helpful shortcuts for you to use. Using the B will bold your text. If instead I want to in italicize the text, I can choose the I for italicized. The next button will help you create a wiki link, which is an internal link from one profile or page on Wikitree to another. When I click on it, I am given double brackets and a template to fill in. Let's say I want to create a link for her husband. I'll go up to his name and use the shortcut hover and click on the copy ID shortcut button to get his wiki ID. I will then paste that in the first section of this template. And in the second section, I will replace that with his name. Now, if we scroll down and click on the preview button, you can see what that looks like. We currently now have a hyperlink to the profile for George Allen. The next button is for external links. Make some room here and click on this button. This will give you a template to put an external link in the profile. Just for an example, I'm going to use her Find a Grave um, memorial, although there are better ways to put a citation for her memorial. We're just going to use this URL. I'm going to replace the URL in the template. And then replace the text. Make sure there's always one space between the URL and the text. And I'm going to put a short description of what this URL um, is for. Find a grave memorial. When I scroll down and click preview again, you will see I have a hyperlink that if I click on that, it will take me to her memorial page. The next button will give you a new subheading in the biography. Subheadings have three equal signs. Notice that the main headings, biography and sources have two equal signs. Three equal signs will give you a subheading. When I click the preview button, you will notice that this subheading is slightly smaller. The size of the font is slightly smaller and will be offset slightly to the right. You can create as many subheadings as you need for different sections in the biography. The next button is called the No Wiki. 
This is an advanced button that you might not use very often, but let me explain it to you. This is when I want to show a, an example to somebody and I don't want the code to, to work. I want them to see what the code actually is. Let me give you an example. Let's say I put in the um, sticker code. For the African American sticker. I don't want the sticker to work. I want people to see what the code is. Right now, if I were to click save, I would end up with the sticker once I click save. But I want to show people what the code is. So I'm going to click the NoWiki link around it. If you click preview, you will see that all people can see is the code. If I remove the NoWiki code, and I click preview, you will see we now have the sticker. The next button creates a line across the biography. This is great to use when you want to create defined sections in the biography that have a visual separation. Clicking on preview again shows you what that line looks like across the page. Please do not create lines manually using dashes, for example, across the page because this will generate errors. Please always use this line button if you want to create visual lines. The next button is called our category picker. This is how you can easily add categories to this profile. You can type in any keywords to find categories. And again, these categories are similar to tags, and you'll want to see the video on categories to learn more about how to use categories um, and what their purpose is. She lived in Linden, Texas. So I could put in a, a um, location category. Oops, this one doesn't appear to be available. Oh, I typed it wrong. You can see that if you don't spell it correctly, it will not show up in the category picker. So spelling does count. So when I type it correctly, it will show up here. And all I have to do is click on it and it will go exactly where it should be in the biography section. I like to collaborate with other projects. So I might also add a project maintenance category. Uh, U.S. Black Heritage Project has several maintenance categories. So I'll type in U.S. Black Heritage Project to see what's available. Maybe I'm not going to have time to write a full biography, so I might want to click on this so the project knows that this profile needs some additional biography work. You can look for different uh, projects across Wikitree to see what maintenance categories are available. You could also do categories such as occupations. This isn't her occupation, but this could have been during her time period. She might have been a washerwoman. It's washer women is the way it's spelled, and I'll click and add that. You have may have noticed uh, while I have been working that an auto save pop up has um, popped into view and has said that this profile has been saved. The auto save will save a draft of your work every 15 seconds so you don't lose your work. However, to permanently save your changes, you will have to go down when you are finished and choose the full save button. Otherwise, it will stay in draft save mode. Before I click on the final button in the toolbar, I do want to point out the sticker that I already added, which the U.S. Black Heritage Project adds to all profiles of people with U.S. Black Heritage to honor, count, and improve the profiles. There are other stickers I could also add to Julia's profile to visually highlight different parts of her life. For instance, I could also add the Texas sticker. She's spent most of her life in Texas. And when I click on the preview, you can see how that shows up below the other sticker. There is a limit of five stickers on a profile. Please see the video on stickers on how to use them and for more information about stickers. Before moving on, let's look at the proper placement of things in a biography. There are certain things that have to go in a certain order um, to be correct on a profile. At the top, there are three things that you will commonly see around the biography heading. The first is categories. These should always go above the biography heading. The second is templates. I don't currently have a template, but I'll write one here. 
which is the unsourced template. You should always go right below the categories and right above the biography heading. Now, if I click preview, you can see that this put a banner at the top that said this profile is unsourced. Stickers should go between the biography heading and the sources heading. Now, in this case, I chose to stack them at the top. So they're one on top of the other, but you could also place them in various sections um, about different parts of her life. Let's say I talk about her life in Texas and I want to put the Texas sticker in that section, it will um, put it down in a lower section. How can you tell the difference between a template like the unsourced template and a sticker? The codes look exactly the same, don't they? Well, the difference is when you go to the preview section, you will see that a sticker always looks exactly this size and is always placed over here on the right. Templates usually appear up at the top in a banner form. I'm going to go ahead and remove this since this is not an unsourced profile and remove that category and we're ready to move on. Okay, now I'm ready to add sources. There are two ways to add sources. One is to list them below the sources heading as I did here and you use an asterisk to make bullet points. So when I go back down to preview, you will see that there's a bullet point next to this source. Another way is to use inline citations. Let's go back to the Find a Grave Memorial. And at the bottom, they have a wonderful source citation section that I can just copy and come over here. I'm going to expand her biography a little bit because it just says she passed away in 1922, which was automatically typed in for me when I created her profile. So instead, I'm going to say she died on uh, November... Eleven, nineteen, twenty-two in Linden, Texas. Now I can put an inline citation here using this final button in the toolbar by clicking on that and pasting the source citation I just copied from Find a Grave between those what we call ref tags. Let me move this sticker back up. When I scroll down and click on preview, you can see how we now have a linked number here that I could click on that would take me straight to the source citation down here in the sources section. Please see the video on sourcing for more information on best practices in sourcing profiles. When first creating a profile, it's best to at least add the basic biographical information about the person and all the sources you have available. In this case, I do have a couple more sources that were not added yet. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these using bullet points. And this doesn't have a location, so I'm going to add that to the citation. And I have one more census record. Again, there's no location, so I'm going to want to add that. Okay, I've now added all the sources that I have available for Julie Ann Carter. One additional thing that I can do is add research notes for other researchers so they can know what I couldn't find, questions I had, or about any conflicting information I came across. I'm going to go ahead and add a research notes section. Research notes section is one of our basic uh, sections, so we'll use two equal signs to create it for a main heading. And in this research note, I'm going to add that I couldn't find the 1870 or 1910 census records. So other people will know I looked, but couldn't yet find them. One additional thing is I'll expand her biography just a little bit and say Julie was born about 1840 in Alabama.
This is a very basic biography right now. So you may wish to expand it, talk about who she married, talk about the children she had. Uh, just give us a little bit more information about the picture of her life. Now all, I have all the parts. I have categories. I have additional headings. I have stickers. I've added a little bit more to the biography and I've added all of the sources. I'm now ready to save this profile. So come down to the save section. I'm going to put bio improvement and I also added sources and I'm going to click full save. So this profile is now ready to add additional information. Expanding a profile might include adding photos of Julia, writing the longer biography we talked about, or adding any newly found sources. Now that I know how to create and edit profiles, I'm going to go ahead and add profiles for George and Julia's children. They had uh, 12 children and we only have one added. Until the next video, happy wiki train!